Hello, I'm Octavio Sainz, and welcome to the Master Thesis Series for the Center for Homeland Defense and Security. With me is Mr. Chris Barney. He's a battalion chief for Portland Fire and Rescue. Chris, how are you today, my friend? Great. Good to see you. Likewise. Good to see you. Uh, let, let's talk about, jump into your thesis. Um, something that I think is very important for people that choose a thesis is something that is uh, important to them. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with, with this topic, where you talk about um, uh, people that are, uh, manifest a protest and social identity theory. Well, in my community, along with others, we've experienced an uptick in protester violence, specifically protester on protester violence. Um, not only uh, Portland, but New York City, Dayton, Ohio, Charlottesville, San Francisco, these cities have experienced this type of violence and it poses a challenge for law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, because the, uh, the expectation of a civil democratic society is one where we are all safe and protesters are safe to freely express their opinion per our uh, First Amendment. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Was this topic something you already had with you when you came first to the uh, center, or did it develop as you were exposed to different uh, uh, different uh, sessions, different classes, different materials? It definitely developed here while I was in uh, class. Mm -hmm. um, it, tell me a little bit more about the research methodologies that you used to approach this, uh, which I think would be a, quite a, a complex topic. This research was a challenge because protester and protester violence uh, presents a different paradigm from the one the law enforcement is typically is faced with, where it's protester on law enforcement uh, violence or clashes. Mm -hmm. um, so to find an analogy where I could do the research that necessary, I had to look for a proxy that would kind of... Uh, you know, elaborate on the use of crowd psychology theory okay. uh, it, where uh, people are fighting each other. I linked this to soccer hooliganism, um, you know, the, uh, the historic uh, clashes between soccer supporter groups that we've seen in the United Kingdom and Europe, sometimes in South America. I researched the uh, application of social identity theory in this paradigm and how it then would relate to uh, the protester and protester violence and found that social identity theory and its subsequent theory, the elaborated social identity model, had a lot of application uh, to uh, protest uh, uh, violence. Mm -hmm. Well, so in some of the case studies that, that you bring about, uh, what, what other complexities were in, in the actual studies as far as you know, developing the in, the social identity theory, uh, applying that to this case. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I did a, a case study on uh, analysis on three specific uh, um, instances of uh, protester on protester violence. Um, I, the first one was the uh, 2004 UEFA soccer tournament in Portugal, where specific uh, theory, uh, applications of social identity theory and ESIM were applied to that tournament and that right. crowd event. Uh, with a great success. Uh -huh. I also looked at the 2017 uh, free, uh, free speech rally in Portland, Oregon, um, and the results from that uh, and, and how, a, how what a, appeared to be the application of uh, social identity theory. Then I concluded with the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, where uh, more classic crowd theory was applied and, and looked at the violence that uh, happened in that instance took all that comparative analysis mm -hmm. uh, and found that social identity theory and ESIM really provide a path forward for law enforcement on engaging protest uh, groups and creating legitimacy to thereby prevent occurrences of uh, uh, group violence. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things that I wanted to, to ask you about how the uh, what, what you discovered and how it could apply to Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else you want to develop or you want to elaborate on its application to Homeland yeah. Security uh, specialists? Well, the analytical markers uh, within social identity theory provide a lot of insight into uh, intergroup dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, that insight can then be translated to uh, the uh, application of ESIM, which is understanding how group behaviors change in the moment based on an external influence. Right. Um, that understanding of uh, changing group identities really can inform law enforcement on how they uh, relate with groups before events, during and after events, how they deploy uh, liaison uh, teams of uh, police liaison mm -hmm. officers with groups to real-time communicate between law enforcement uh, command and groups to 
cre- uh, avoid misunderstandings and right. create better relationships in the moment to then foster that legitimacy of both the protest group intent, the group I- identities in the moment, and also law enforcement uh, uh, methodologies to create mm-hmm. public safety and uh, opportunities for free speech. Mm-hmm. So any recommendations that you found uh, as far as far as your research, as far as looking at the case studies and how you develop the social identity theory, which in, in, in essence is really understand the other group to avoid those those conflicts, correct? It's understand those the other group, uh, not just uh, bilaterally. It's not right. just police understanding uh, the each group, but it's also the groups understanding the methodologies the police uh, are right. going to employ. Um, the recommendations going forward are to definitely uh, uh, bring social identity theory and the elaborated social identity model into law enforcement crowd control uh, efforts. Uh-huh. Um, foster uh, legitimacy between all groups involved in uh, protest crowd events um, and and offer a scaled uh, law enforcement uh, response that matches with the uh, threat, the identified threat uh, um, of the groups that will be participating. Mm -hmm. Any other way that you find, uh, you know, we have a very diverse group in our cohort, Um, any any plans of maybe uh, helping uh, promote this to other areas, other uh, uh, other fire departments, other police uh, officers. I think just the discussion within our cohorts, uh, you know, informally and uh, within the classroom about yeah. our theses, and my having the opportunity to discuss it with other uh, participants, other students, and classmates um, has uh, begun that process. Great. Well, Chris, thank you very much. Really appreciate it, and thank, thank you. you for joining us once again in another edition of the Master Thesis Series. Mm-hmm.